Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Dear students, industrial development is one of the most important lengthy and somehow difficult chapter for most of the students. But don't worry, I am going to make it very easy and precise. Therefore, watch this complete video to get most of it. For your better understanding, I have divided this chapter into subtopics which we'll be covering in three videos. So in this part one video, the following talk topics shall be covered. Difference between formal and informal industries. You should be able to define the cottage, small scale and large scale industries. Input process and, and output which are carried out in large scale industries of Pakistan. Differences among the primary, secondary and tertiary industries. Industrial location. That is too important for examination point of view because many times understanding and skill based questions were set from this part. I'll give you the shortcut or a short formula to answer all types of questions related to industrial location. And last but not the least advantages and disadvantages of large scale industries of Pakistan. This is another salient part of your syllabus. But I'll give you uh, the hint or the shortcut to answer this type of question comfortably. Let's begin with the, <clears throat> the first one, primary, secondary and tertiary industry. Differences between primary, secondary and tertiary industries. Remember, the primary industry is the type of industry which provides us food and raw material. Food and raw material. All kinds of occupation or of the world which provides food and raw material are grouped into primary industry. For example, fishing, farming, mining and forestry. These are all those, those four major sectors which come under primary industry because you can see they provide, they provide us food and raw material. For example, fishing provides us food and raw material. Farming, agriculture farming or livestock farming provides us food and raw material both for industries and mining provides raw material, forestry provides food and raw material for both, both for industry like timber for furniture industry and fruit. Manufacturing, secondary industry. Secondary industry is the manufacturing industry. The goods which are manufactured or processed in industry using raw material comes under secondary industry. <clears throat> this industry or manufacturing may be in a single room like a bakery where a bread is being baked or to a large scale industry like car factory, fertilizer or to medium scale, a floor mill industry. So anywhere where the raw material is being used to manufacture or process the process is being processed to manufacture a product is uh, comes under secondary industry. Tertiary industry. Third one is the tertiary industry mean this is called services industry. Tertiary industry is the industry which provides us, which provides services to primary and secondary industry. For example, banking, retail shops, restaurants. These are all those sectors, services sector, which provide services to primary and secondary industry. So all kind of occupation can be grouped under primary, secondary and tertiary industries. Primary industry is the industry which provides us food and raw material. And examples are given here and secondary industry is the industry which, manf which manufacture the goods that may be a small scale to a large scale industry. For example, car, fert factory, fertilizer or floor mill and tertiary industry is the industry which provides services like banking, retail shops, restaurants, transport, trading, etc. So these are all the examples of the tertiary industry. Let's move towards the differences between formal and informal sector of industries. Two types of industries we can divide it into majorly. For example, one is the large scale industry and the second one is the small scale or cottage industry. All remember the large scale industries comes under formal sector of industries. Most of the in most of the small scale and cottage industries are the part of informal sectors. Sector. For example, the, what is the difference? Let's begin with the formal sector industrial business is registered. All the cement industries, fertilizer industries, uh, sugar mills, all these big industries, thermal power station, you know, all these are registered by the government because they cannot hide. So they are registered in Pakistan or anywhere in the world. All big industries are always 
register number one number two pay tax all these big industries pay tax or file their tax returns every year regular wages uh, working hours there the labor has regular working hours that is eight hours a day and if uh, they have to work for more than eight hours so they are paid regular or certain wages their wages are fixed the labor's wages are fixed employer rights protected the rights given to the large scale industries includes the medical sometimes transport and uh, housing facilities so these rights are protected so these are provided by the large scale industries to their labor normally males in large scale industries you know the mostly the males members they do work and capital intensive with few workers capital what is a capital capital usually is term is used for the money but which money capital is the money that is for investment for example if i am running a business and from my profit i spend uh, i earn a profit and i invest this profit to meet my daily expenses and after meeting my daily expenses the money which is left it is my saving now this saving i can invest anywhere this money is called capital the money that is with me to meet my daily expenses is not the capital so capital is the money which is available for me which is available to invest in some other business to invest in some uh, invest somewhere so capital intensive large scale industries or the formal sector industries are capital invested invest intensive because they required huge capital all large scale industries they need huge capital why to buy or to import machineries with few workers with machinery definitely when it is generally mechanized so few fewer workers therefore required <coughs> the machinery they are working like in cement industry in the sugar mills if you travel you can see the huge machinery so this machinery when work so few were fewer workers are needed therefore it is termed as the capital intensive with fewer worker because it is generally mechanized machines are working relatively uh, guaranteed standard in quality of goods yes uh, uh, standardized goods are produced in large scale industries because heavy machineries are working they are the manufacture the product work is located in offices or factories you can see there are offices there are factories of uh, factories there are certain proper areas uh, where these industries are in formal sector how it is different from the formal sector you can bring in your mind the small cottage and the small scale industries <clears throat> their business is not registered usually like brick kiln industry the jewelry making or handicrafts or sports goods surgical instruments so these all businesses are not registered by the government yes some of the small scale industrial industries may be registered but not all this is not case case of all industries usually do not pay taxes as they are not registered so don't they directly therefore they don't pay tax to the government they don't file uh, don't file tax returns every year long working hours they have around usually 10 to 12 working hours there is no fix hours or of working there in small scale industries or cottage industries low wages paid they they are paid low wages and there is no fix wage like here they have certain or regular wages or fix wages don't have the low wage they have low wages and their wages are not fixed it depends on the skill next implies rights not protected here implies rights are protected and uh, but in this informal sector of industries which are not registered by the government employee right, rights are not protected anywhere you can any time you can be expelled from your job mostly females and children in informal sector of industry that is based on mainly the cottage and small scale industries mostly you know that this work is done in home and in some small areas in small where female are mostly and the children do work labor intensive mainly hand tools it is labor intensive here the word was used capital intensive huge capital is required huge money was required to buy machinery but here because most of the work is done by hand or tools 
therefore it is labor intensive the more most labor is required it is therefore termed as the labor intensive the more labor is needed to work or to manufacture the goods mainly because they use hand tools very few modern machines are used which which use small you know, this very few modern machines which use low electricity low voltage electricity this type of machinery is used often low standard in quality of goods their standard is not good enough because mostly they use the locally available raw material work done at home that is the cottage industry the cottage industry is a household industry therefore the household industry is the industry when the goods are manufactured in homes i hope you have come to know the meanings uh, or the differences between the formal and informal sector of industries and remember the formal sector of industries are those industries which are mainly the large scale industries and small scale and cottage industry most of these industries fall into informal sector because these are not registered they don't don't pay taxes regularly or the the workers labor has long working hours low wages and implied rights are not protected mostly female it is labor intensive very few modern machines are used often low standard in quality work done at home so these were the differences between the informal and informal sector of industries let's move to the next slide that is the difference between small scale and large scale industries so small scale and large scale industries we have two types of industries in pakistan so we can group into the small scale cottage and large scale but this here we are going to compare it with the small scale and large scale industry industries that require capital less than 1 uh, crore here it is written no this is 1 million called small scale industry but here there is no limit for this this uh, limit for the money to invest because it is large scale industries are capital intensive production is low in targeted for local market only small scale industries their production is low but they have good production they uh, in small scale industries low skilled or non skilled workers uh, are usually required they manufacture the products but here you can see the in large scale industry industries highly skilled labor is needed <coughs> in small scale industries high cost productivity with non uniform products their products in small scale industries are not uniform are not same in quality but here the production is fine and cheap with uniform production it become cheap because in large quantity the goods are being produced in large scale industries labor implied in small in number labor here the small number of in one unit in one area in one industry only fewer member fewer people are implied their number can be up to 9 if they are not if they are using electricity and the small scale industry uh, which where electricity is not being used so the implied um, implied number can be increased up to 20 so mostly the small scale industry is, is the industry where nine people up to nine people are implied if they are using electricity so this number may increase up to 20 if they are not using electricity here imply large number of labor a one industry can uh, imply a large number of labor here remember we are talking about a single industry the small scale single industry uh, can imply uh, usually have imply up to 9 using if using electricity on the other hand uh, large scale industries can imply large number of people maybe in thousands 2000 3000 6000 people in one industry working in example for example toy making industry or pickle here the cotton textile industry and steel industry i hope you have come to know the meaning or differences between small scale and large scale industries again uh, let me summarize uh, the small scale industry is the, is the industry where the total asset of the industry is up to 1 million mean 10 lakh 1 million means their asset may be up to 1 million <coughs> and on the asset mean all kind of equipment tools machinery it is their asset the, uh, its its cost totally may be up to 1 million on the other hand the large scale industries their asset may be in billions in crore or in millions of dollar even can be production usually this in small scale industry production is low the total number of people are implied in small scale industry may be 9 in one industry we are talking about in one industry their number can be 9 or if they are using electricity and this number can increase up to 20 if they are not using electricity 
on the other end in a single large scale industry the number of uh, many thousands of people may be working the employer large number therefore the large scale industry one single large scale industry can employ large number of people but remember the small scale industry out of the total labor in pakistan the 70% people they are working in small scale and cottage industries and only 30% people they are engaged in large scale industries overall in general general if we see in broader spectrum the out of the total industrial labor 70% people they are working in small scale and cottage industries and 30% people they are engaged in large scale industries of pakistan let's move towards the large scale and uh, small scale industries make a list you should make a list of these large scale industries like fertilizer cement industry sugar mills iron and steel industry automobile industry and thermal power stations so here is a list of the large scale industries and the other side small scale industry you can see the surgical instruments sports goods jewelry furniture making brick kiln paper bag industries leather belt manufacturing industry small toy manufacturing industry bakery school stationery water bottle manufacturing industries pickle manufacturing industries you should prepare this type of list uh, and you should have some example of the small scale and cottage industries with you and the large scale industries of pakistan but now we'll see the industrial system industrial system is of three type industrial system works like input process and output so these three processes are carried out in the industry so therefore it is termed as industrial system input process and output you need to know about all these processes or all these uh, three different parts of industrial systems you should be able to know the output first let's start from the output output is very easy to uh, know for example if there is a cement industry you know that what is their output that is definitely cement if there is a sugar mill what is their output definitely it's a sugar a sugar and the brick kiln industry it manufacture bricks and iron and steel industry it manufacture the steel or <coughs> so the output is therefore easy sometime this type of questions are given for one mark or for two marks maximum to identify the output of different types of industries in pakistan usually this question asked for many uh, for more than two time, times about iron and steel industry the so second is the processes it means you need to understand the processes which are carried out the man, uh, carried out in the iron steel industry cement textile sugar mill and brick kiln industry so these processes how me, it means how iron cement or textile sugar mills how uh, cement is manufactured so this processes you should be able to identify you should be able to label or sometime you should be able to describe in your own word it can be using the proper term used for uh, used in all industries while processing so for this i have, i shall make another video in uh, mainly that will be on the processes on this part this is little technical part i'll explain in those in the next video how processes are carried out in iron steel industry mean how cement is manufactured in cement industry or the textile or the sugar mills how these are manufactured sugar is manufactured in sugar mills the brick kiln industry industrial video is available on the same uh, channel you can watch it from there inputs now we are going to discuss the input that is very much important this is about the industrial location the input determines the industrial location remember the input determine the industrial location but how because the factors what are those factor affect the industrial location so here is a list of those some of those factors which affect the industrial location mean which determine the location of any industry for example if i say a fertilizer industry most of the fertilizer industries are located within the 60 km area from sadka bar to district ghotki so these most of the industries like the fauji fertilizer industry uh, and then we have the fatma fertilizer industry next to it there is an agro fertilizer industry and next again there is a fauji fertilizer company so all these four major textile in, uh, sorry fertilizer industries are located within the 60 km area in the northern sindh and the southern punjab from satka bar to district ghotki so what is the reason what are the reasons that why these industries are located within the, within this small area within the 60 km area so factors what are those factors which 
were suitable or which <coughs> which provide this industry uh, or facilitate this industries to set up in this area so number one you can see the raw material it means the raw material is available at this place so most of the industries will agglomeration agglomerated at this site and power supply there also definitely a power supply it is the basic need electricity is needed to run the machinery so labor so where from the labor come and, uh, nearby there is a satkabad rehmer khan the one of the the two major city and district ghot ki itself is a labor is available and all over pakistan because it is a large scale industry it can afford so it can hire labor so they have their residential uh, colonies or the townships so they can uh, hire labor from all over pakistan and for unskilled job labor is available from those ghotki satkabad nearby cities the capital the money where from it comes so whether it is the local investor or from the foreign investor it may be the market where is the market for the products being produced in uh, those mark in fertilizer industry where the market for this that is punjab in sindh mainly and next then uh, third may be the uh, balochistan and kpk because the large fields are in punjab and sindh so most of the industries are therefore set up in in this area in the plain areas of punjab and sindh water where from the water come water may be coming from the river indus and site so this factor can be of natural and man made to so site is a natural site mean the land so land must be remember cheap flat unused and as per the requirement of the size so it means uh, these industries fertilizer industries set up here because the uh, the site was suitable site how mean the land was suitable it was unused cheap and uh, flat and large in size <clears throat> therefore most of the industries were set up here transported transport transport there is a national highway n5 and now the motorways are also available m5 and the other side there is a railway track so transport links were available in at this area of the northern punjab where fertilizer industries were set up and next to communication means of communication other means of communication like fiber optics <coughs> were also available so these are the few factors and we can include some more factors here to explain the location of any area you can be asked that where why iron and steel industry is located in the south of pakistan or at the uh, or in karachi you can be asked that uh, uh, there is a cement industry so where would you like to set up this cement industry so keeping in view all these factors you need to explain for example if you say that i want to set up if i want to set up the cement industry where would be the uh, preferred site definitely where the raw material I mean gypsum and limestone stone is available this could be the most important site for the industry uh, for the cement industry and next labor must be available nearby so you need to choose the location of industry keeping in view all those factors these factors you should uh, note down or you should memorize but and if you are given the industry so you need to simply explain that why this industry is located here it means it has all these factors available you need to link you need to link the raw material which raw material is available for this industry at this place therefore this industry setup two type of questions are usually asked uh, in factor affecting industries or regarding location one is why the sugar mill is located at this particular site or why the cement industry is located at the rodi why the uh, cement industry is located near karachi or why there is a uh, cement industry at hyderabad so you can see all these factors you need to explain all these factors that would explain the raw material where is the raw material hyderabad the cement industry is hyderabad because there is a ganju tucker railway from the uh, cement uh, uh, limestone and gypsum that is used as a raw material is available labor where from it is available from hyderabad which is the second largest city of pakistan and capital and also skilled labor from all over pakistan mainly from karachi and hyderabad capital the money the, the local investor 
are in Karachi and Hyderabad. Those who invested and market, where is the market? The big market is facil, uh, itself is the Karachi for the cement and the Hyderabad. Therefore, the industry is set up in uh, Hyderabad because the big market of cement is available being the second largest city. The cement is used in bridges and for building houses and industries. Water is available from river Indus that is flowing through Hyderabad and the power that comes from in, uh, thermal power station in Hyderabad or from national grid system, the site and land, yes, there is a flat land available or that is unused, cheap and as per the size requirement available to this land or the site was suitable. Transport, yes, there is a road and railways available for to carry the raw material and to send the uh, cement to rest of Pakistan. Communication mean for industry, the fiber optics, etc. or other means of telecommunications which are needed available at the Hyderabad. So this is what communication mean. You need to explain what kind of communication is available. That could be the telecommunication or the fiber optics. So that is the need of the time is also the, uh, the fiber optics uh, is also available. The telephone line is available. So these are the means of communication. This is how you need to explain. Let's take an example of the iron and steel industry. Why iron and steel industry is located at Karachi <coughs> near Port Qasim. So you need to explain the raw material. Number one is the raw material. It comes from the imported uh, imported iron ore through Port Qasim. So this is located at the Port Qasim. Why? Because the port the, uh, it uses the imported raw material. This iron and steel industry uses the imported raw material that comes from the uh, and that is for example the iron ore and, and manganese and coal and coke which comes from through the port to this industry and locally available raw material li like limestone it comes from the Marli Hills in Karachi near Karachi. Where from the power come the thermal power station at Pipri and Kurangi etc. There are six thermal power station where from the electricity is available. Land or site mean the land that is flat cheap near Garo Creek at Pipri was available. This flat cheap near uh, flat cheap unused land was available at Garo Creek at Pipri. Therefore, this industry was set up there. Transport means ships, cargo, trains and containers were available. Uh, so ships mean the natural route. Ships is a natural route. There is a sea and cargo trains that carry the trans that can transport the, uh, uh, the steel to the rest of Pakistan. And there are containers mean the roadway, uh, uh, sorry, road tracks is available. The communication Karachi to Kota railway, railway line is available. There are metal road like national highway to connect with rest of Pakistan and five labor is available from Karachi, both skilled and unskilled and all over Pakistan as well, because it is a large scale industry can afford to hire labor from anywhere in from Pakistan capital that but the capital came from the USSR because it is one of the largest industry huge capital was needed so it was given by the USSR market where is the market for iron and steel that is in Karachi all over Pakistan HMC at Texla in the northern um, heavy mechanical complex is a factory that is in the north of Pakistan at Texla so the steel produced in Karachi used to send to HMC heavy mechanical complex at Texla where it was used as a raw material to manufacture the uh, different industrial parts. For example, the you know, parts of thermal power station and some parts of sugar mills were used to manufacture at HMC or Abhibiyote. Water. Water in iron and steel industries available from Haleji Lake that is that supply water to Karachi. So this is how actually again you need to explain explain uh, that uh, explain the factor for against any of the industry you can be given here instead of iron and steel industry you can be given sugar mill for example in the southern Sindh or in the northern Punjab why this sugar mill if it is asked is located at this particular site you need to look at all these factors first you need to see the raw material it means the sugar mills where there is a sugar mill always remember it means that there are sugarcane fields you would so you would explain 
the raw in this industry the sugar mill is located at this is a particular site because the sugar cane fields are located in the northern punjab and labor you can tell that the labor is available from from nearby city where this industry is so you need to name those city and capital where from it comes you can tell that if there is a nearby there is a big city you can say that like in lahore if the faisalabad if it is so you can tell that faisalabad lahore multan etc so these are the big cities so there are people those who can invest those who are entrepreneur so they are they are living there so they invested to set up this industry market where is the market for the sugar definitely the big cities are the market for the sugar and water water where from the water come you can see nearby if there is a water source mean for example there is a river or you you should name the river that uh, to explain that where from the water come to the sugar mills and the power supply that is definitely if uh, it is close to the main major cities all major cities of pakistan in punjab and in sindh they have thermal power stations you can tell that there is a thermal power station or if you are not familiar with if you don't know that there is a thermal power station you can tell the electricity is available from the national through the national grid system and uh, also the sugar mill had has its own thermal power station the land and site would this requirement would remain same for the sugar mill mean the cheap flat and uh, cheap flat and uh, unused land was available therefore this industry was set up there at a particular place the given place transport is available mean the ships or uh, containers available road and there is a train as well and communication you can again explain there is a nearby road which road it is that is very much close or if it may be the motorway you can tell about the road or railways both so here an example uh, another example is given for the cotton and textile now you should fill it yourself for example cotton and textile at faisalabad why most of the cotton and textile industries are located in faisalabad so you should explain all these factors by yourself or it can be asked why uh, the hyderabad is famous for its cotton and textile industry so you should you need here you are required again to explain those factors and out of these one factor is the land that is land mean the natural factor you can be asked to explain the natural factor and the human factor so natural is the land that is called site site mean land uh, and the natural root natural root is the sea so, but you don't have the sea here in the faisalabad so don't uh, use this site requirement on the uh, oh, sorry don't use uh, the natural root here you can use the land so you need to actually explain instead of instead of cotton textile industry you can be asked to explain uh, for example why the fertilizer industry is located at this particular place in the northern punjab again you would explain these all these factors this is how if you have worked one time if you have written those looking at the location by yourself you, any type of industrial location question or you uh, you can attempt and you can be given a situation for example the four sites may be given and you can be asked that which one is the most suitable site for the industrial look, uh, site for cement industry you can be given four sites you can be given two sites on the map and it can be asked the why the which which site is most suitable for a sugar mill so here you would be the next question can be explain why why this site chosen by you between a and b on the map is the most suitable so again you need to explain all these factors mean for example land there was a site land is a site you would explain that the flat cheap and and flat cheap unused and <coughs> land is available the labor the nearby there is a city where from the labor comes or the all over pakistan if it is a large scale industry can be hired the raw material is available it might it would be available definitely close nearby so this is how you can explain the factors affecting the industrial location factors are same and you can add some more factors here but uh, explanation would also remain same you need to be gently 
or you need to be consciously pick the, the factors uh, you need to explain them for example raw material where from it is coming you need to write site or you need to write the raw and you need to write the raw material that is used in the particular industry given to you i hope you have come to know how to write the uh, how to explain the factor effect in the industrial location and next last but not the least is the advantages and problem of the large scale industries i'll tell you that how to write the advantages if of all large scale industries these can be fit on almost all large scale industries but yes you should give first you, you should give the the most relevant advantages and problems of uh, large scale industries but here i'm going to share with you all those factors all those advantages and problems which are same for all industries so let's begin with the first advantages which are common for all large scale industries like number 1 locally manufactured steel for example iron and steel given here example of iron and steel instead of locally manufactured steel is cheaper than imported steel instead of steel if you use here the cement locally manufactured cement is cheaper than imported steel or imported cement yes this is an advantage or instead of steel if i use if you are asked fertilizer write the advantages of fertilizer again it would be same locally manufactured fertilizer is cheaper than the imported fertilizer why it happens because imported fertilizer or imported steel has to pay tax has to pay duty this duty is called uh, tax so this tax has to pay therefore it become even more expensive so locally manufactured steel locally manufactured instead of steel any of the large scale industry uh, if you are if you are given so you can tell here that this is an advantage because locally manufactured product from large scale industry is cheaper than the imported steel. number 2 it may increase foreign exchange earning if exported any of the large scale industrial product if it is exported definitely it will help you to earn foreign exchange the foreign exchange is the money uh, or you can directly say the dollar so other countries money so this is the foreign exchange so increase it would help to increase the foreign exchange if exported reduction in imports thus occurring balance of payment like fertilizer the fatma fertilizer recently in the last few couple of years it it established so definitely the production of fertilizer increases in pakistan it helps to re reduce the import and how it helps to the balance of payment uh, our balance of payment remains usually negative why because we our import is high and it with the establishment of the fatma fertilizer the fertilizer production reduce uh, the import of the fertilizer reduces now as compared to earlier we are importing less fertilizer definitely the less money is being uh, less foreign exchange is being spent that help us to improve the balance of payment to correct the or to improve the balance of payment encourage industrialization leading to economic development definitely it helps or encourage industrialization one again there is a same example there were three industries fertilizer industries it encourages another industry to set up in this area so within these three uh, industries those who already exist fertilizer industries in the northern sind and those in southern punjab another industry set up here that encourages industrialization this is how industries get in, uh, encouraged that definitely lead economic development it becomes the even more source of income generated larger gnp gdp and or national income gnp generally gen, uh, it is termed as gross national product mean the national income you can simply understand you can relate it with the national income so national income and gdp it gross domestic product it reflects the total production from a country that is from the primary sector secondary or tertiary sector so gd it reflects by the gdp and gnp mean the, it uh, you can simply understand uh, the national in income the national income or the government's income that is from the export 
and the remittances remittances uh, means the uh, pakistani those who are living abroad the money which is sent by them to pakistan is called remit remittances it become the part of the income of the government so remittances in now at this time the most of the income of the government or the gnp is reflected that is reflect in gnp is from the remittances and export and the third uh, when uh, aid when aid comes to pakistan so this is this become the part of gnp and uh, uh, after aid there might be suppose uh, if government sell its asset like to any foreign company like thermal power station if it is sold to any foreign company and the uh, money which will be earned by the government so this would reflect into gnp the national income will increase loan the if the loans are given to pakistan so this reflect in the gnp but gdp is the reflection of the production what that is the uh, the goods which are manufacturing or the production from primary secondary and tertiary industry so this is the gdp and gnp major difference next you can see the provides employment for the industrial labor all uh, sorry larger gnp when the when we have the large scale industries it definitely uh, help to improve the gnp and gdp or the national income next all types of large scale industry provide employment opportunities for the industry level provide raw material for a number of industries such as tool making I mean the steel industry here provide the raw material for number of industries such as tool making factories construction industry agriculture and employment here if it is uh, for example here it can be uh, the sugar mill sugar mills provides uh, raw material instead of raw material you can see the fuel like bagas and raw material like molasses to uh, the chemical industry here you can use this so 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 6 are major this the six are common advantages almost with all kinds of large scale industries if you have memorized these six advantages or seventh one you need to be smart enough to use any your advantages but the six are very easy these are related to all kind of large scale industries if advantage of any industries as for example the cement industry iron and steel industry thermal power station sugar mills any of the large scale industry if you're talking about to, if it is said to write the advantages you can easily write you can list down all these six advantages smartly next the disadvantages of large scale industries mean the problems of large scale industries here you can see the environmental pollution due to industrial waste environmental pollution all kind of industries create or pollution it spread pollution but you need to explain the kind of pollution whether it is uh, noise pollution air pollution water pollution or land pollution and always it is better to develop it further to write the if you said the air pollution so how it create or how it spread air pollution air pollution from smoking it produce smoke that pollute the air or smoke and gases and what kind of gases you should give the example of the gas and gases carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide etc is released that pollute the air and if you are talking about the noise pollution so why how it create noise pollution and if we, you said the water pollution so you need to explain that how it pollute the water by throwing its chemical waste into the or dumping into the canal or river this is how it create environmental pollution any of the industry because all industries they they create pollution of all air water land and what uh, air so noise require ample electricity lack of power supply in pakistan is another problem and along with lack of power supply load shedding you can add the high cost of electricity this has become even bigger problem in pakistan along with the lack of power supply so <clears throat> lack of power supply electricity and natural gas affect the steel production here instead of steel there might be a cement cement industry sugar mills thermal any of the industry you can take here that the lack of power supply and high cost of electricity is become has become a major problem for all kind of industry whether it is textile industry 
lack of technical experts and skilled labor this is the case this is the problem with all our industries in pakistan the technical experts are very less in number requires infrastructure for setting up thus causing a burden on the economy requires infrastructure whenever the word infrastructure is used to always write the infrastructural example sorry i have not written here for example the electricity water supply water water supply uh, sewerage uh, fiber optics telephone line so these this is the infrastructure required for an industry but to set up uh, to provide such infrastructure is a burden on the economy the government uh, right now if you see uh, is under debt huge debt therefore cannot afford to provide such infrastructural facilities or to the industries because it become it has become a burden on the or it may be a burden on the economy next advantage is uh, required imported raw materials such as iron ore and manganese causing extra burden on the foreign exchange reserves and large large scale industries they use locally available raw material as well as the imported raw material for example at this year due to heavy rainfall <coughs> our cotton crop 70% cotton crop has been destroyed but now now we have to import the raw material i mean the cotton has to be imported so if uh, and our industries would make use of imported raw material I mean the imported cotton <coughs> that would cause extra burden on, on the foreign exchange reserves I mean the foreign exchange reserves which are already too less which are already less and being consumed to import the basic necessities of the life like uh, wheat edible oil and some other vegetable fruit tomato potatoes are even are being imported now so it's a huge burden for uh, those foreign exchange reserves which are already less if we have to import the raw material like cotton or the the large scale industries which make use of the raw, imported raw material so it create a burden on the foreign exchange reserves of the country so here is, is a list of the disadvantages or the problems of large scale industries in pakistan 1 2 3 4 5 so the five problems are common with almost all uh, large scale industries of pakistan if you are given to write about the cement industry so you you can tell that it creates cement industry create pollution so air pollution water pollution noise pollution you need to explain that how uh, require ample of electricity uh, cement industry is a big industry that requires uh, 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 and require ample electricity and due to load shedding you can tell uh, the production process gets stopped the labor become idle and the high cost of electricity has increased the input cost of the cement and lack of technical expert and skilled labor is a major problem uh, with all industries including the cement industry the skilled labor is commonly not available or they are very less in number so in say no to no uh, never use the no uh, that is not available here use na kare बल्कि उसकी जगह करें लैक ऑफ स्किल लेबर इज अ प्रॉब्लम के नेक्स्ट रिक्वायर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर और गवर्नमेंट जो है वो इफ वो ट्राई टू प्रोवाइड इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर टू द सीमेंट इंडस्ट्री दैट वुड क्रिएट अ बर्डन ऑन द इकोनॉमी एन अदर प्रॉब्लम इज द इंपोर्टेड रॉ मटेरियल समटाइम हैज टू यूज इट बिकम अ प्रॉब्लम लाइक दिस इंडस्ट्री मेक यूज ऑफ द फ्यूल जिप्सम सॉरी जिप्सम इज नॉट इंपोर्टेड वी हैव दिस जिप्सम अवेलेबल फ्यूल एल एन जी एंड एल एन जी इम्पोर्टेड coal is used by the cement industry that create a burden on the foreign exchange reserves so this is how you need to tell you need to explain the disadvantages of any large scale industry of pakistan thank you very much for watching this video stay blessed <coughs> and don't forget to subscribe this channel allah hafiz